Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Presently, at General Hospital, Port as Willow presses Michael to make amends with Sunny. Finn notices that Gregory is aging more quickly than anticipated, and Charles comes together to bid farewell to Spencer. After Cyrus arrives at the cemetery, Laura and Kevin place white roses on a recently prepped tomb. Alexis reads Spencer's eulogy as Sunny, Ava, and other visitors arrive to place flowers on the grave. Sam, Dante, Joss, Christina, Gregory, Finn, Liz, and Cam are present, as well as Trina, Portia, and Curtis. Trina and Cam give each other a hug while Alexis puts down the last rose. As Cam, Spencer, and Joss had been friends since they were little, Trina expresses her condolences to Cam for her loss. Cam wonders if he'll see Trina at Windermere after Joss and Trina give him an embrace. Cam urges Trina to get in touch if she needs anything because she's not sure whether she can manage it. Since Windermere was Spencer's only actual home, Laura appreciates Ava for allowing the gathering there as well as Alexis for the lovely eulogy. Trina, when Ava checks on her, confesses to feeling numb. Trina tells Ava that she doesn't need to say anything because she has always been there to support her, even though Ava has a lot to say to her. Ava promises to be there for her no matter what. Portia says they assume they are heading home, but Ava asks her and her to Windermere. Cam mentions to Liz that he was also his oldest enemy when they discussed the loss of his oldest buddy. Liz will always remember their rivalry over Emma. Liz tells Finn she has something to take care of before leaving for home while Cam heads to see his grandmother. Laura expresses to Cam her gratitude for having him here. Laura and Cam head to the car since Cam has missed her. Kevin promises to catch up since he needs to attend to something. Finn sees his father immersed in contemplation. Although Gregory had always planned to be cremated, he now believes that what he really wants is a location and a memorial that his sons can visit in the future. Finn claims that's all he can think about, even though he doesn't need to consider it. Gregory starts having an episode out of the blue. At another grave, where Esme has a plain marker, Liz is on her knees. Kevin walks up to join her and puts a rose on the tomb. As Trina, Corsia, and Curtis come back home, she receives a letter from the Sorbonne informing her that a space will be reserved for her the next semester. She is not, however, planning on going back to PCU or returning to Paris. She claims that everything, even school, is pointless. She shouldn't make decisions that will change her life right now, Curtis warns her. Later, Trina makes the decision to walk by the lake by herself and leaves. She recalls the day Spencer gave them to her, as she discovers the turtle dove in her jacket pocket. Ava has assembled an album of Spencer's pictures at Windermere, which she discovered after packing. When the doorbell rings, Ava answers it. In the meantime, everybody talks about how they can't believe Spencer is no longer among them. When Ava opens the door, Cyrus is there. Cyrus claims he came for his sister, but Ava informs him he's not wanted here. Laura comes over and tells Ava it's okay for him to come in. Cyrus remarks that he wasn't anticipating such animosity on a day like today as Ava storms off. Why would he do anything else? Laura wonders. Laura informs Cyrus that he has harmed many people, and that when people see him, they perceive. What's that? A monster? Do you also see me that way? Cyrus makes the decision to go and assures her that he will always be there for her, that he cares about her, and that she would eventually realize this. Joss explains that he truly had an impact on Spencer and improved him as a person, and she and Cam console each other. Sam reassures Dante that since he is off duty today, he is free to grieve as well. Dandy tells Sam that the FBI is looking into Sonny's shooting, and that lead investigator John Cates is upset with his father. Dante is currently frightened about his father. As Sam approaches Sonny and asks, Sonny doesn't know what. He implies that Sonny is ignorant. Why did he tell me this? 
Dunn says he is unable to discuss the Metro court shooting since it is still under investigation and involves more parties than just Jordan and Anna. After deciding to go, Sunny thanks Ava for having them all stay. Dan questions Sam about his decision to keep the FBI's involvement from Sunny, but Sam believes it was a wise decision. When Sunny learns out, Dante believes he might not agree. Joss hopes they could have seen each other in less terrible circumstances as she and Cam head out. Although Cam is happy that they finally met, he concurs. When he inquires about Dex, Joss responds, they're fine, which makes him glad. All Cam wants is for everyone to be content. Brick tells Sonny that he hasn't received anything yet when they speak on the phone in his office. In order to deal with the traitor, he wants to know who he is. Returning to the cemetery, Kevin acknowledges that he wasn't prepared to see Liz during Esm's burial. Liz is aware of the suffering Esm gave Cameron, but she also gave Esm misery by assisting Nicholas in holding her captive. Kevin pitied Eastman because she was the most solitary person he had ever encountered. Heather shows up out of the blue in shackles, sobbing as she falls on Esm's grave. Heather sobs that she attempted to persuade her daughter to put Spencer behind her and wait for her to help her locate her child once more. Heather sobs that her baby must have been washed out to sea because she doesn't see why Esme pursued Spencer because he was never worth it. Liz expresses her regret for Heather's loss to her. Heather tells Liz how much she admires her and how, by defending Esme from Nicholas, she given her a fighting shot at life. Heather lashes out at Kevin claiming that without him, Esme would still be alive. According to Liz, Kevin made an effort to assist Esme. Heather is still screaming at Kevin for failing to cure Ryan after years of shielding him and letting him go back out into the world where he could have gotten hold of Esme. It's good people like you who destroy lives, she cries. Liz reassures Kevin that he has nothing to do with Ryan's behavior. Kevin is aware that Heather is correct, when she says that Liz is constantly trying to find the positive in people. Kevin responds that Ace will be well taken care of and is in good hands with Laura when Heather concerns what will happen to her grandchild. Heather begs Liz to watch over them and threatens to pay hell if Kevin doesn't treat Ace better than he did Esme. Heather kisses Esme's marker with a bending forward before returning her to Pentonville. Gregory urges Finn to chat to him elsewhere so that he may forget about this episode. After Gregory settles down, Finn brings up Violet and inquires as to if this has happened previously. Gregory admits that it has, and that Tracy irritated him greatly the last time to assist him forget about the incident. Gregory declines to go to the hospital, despite Finn's request. Finn tries to help his dad, but he gets upset with him for keeping his symptoms from him. Gregory claims that no one can save him, despite his desire. In the time he has left, all Gregory wants is an open and sincere relationship with him, and they embrace. Gregory is in the car when Liz gets back to Finn. Finn had an incident today and is aware that his dad's condition is deteriorating. She apologizes profusely to him. Finn is aware that his father will not be able to care for himself for very long. Wiping Amelia's spit up off himself at the gatehouse, Michael discovers that he sent Wiley to school without his workbook. When Willow gets home from work, he's left wondering how she manages to seem so effortless. She claims that having a lot of support is the only secret. After Willow visits Amelia, she discovers Michael pouring at Wiley's workbook. Observing that he is not in a haste to get to work, she inquires as to if he is still at odds with Drew. Although Michael claims he isn't, he turned down Drew's request for assistance in exacting revenge on Nina. He acknowledges that he was tempted, as she says, but he doesn't want to take the chance of losing his family once more. Willow is grateful that he followed through on his words since it means a lot to her. Willow replies that he and his father also need to recover. It's not just them. She claims that this is not their first argument and that he cannot avoid Sonny indefinitely. Since Bobby's funeral, Michael hasn't seen his father. Willow encourages him to keep trying for his father. Michael leaves for his job. When Willow is by herself, she uses a tablet to browse through family pictures and appears confused while gazing out the window. 
Let's do this, says Brooke Lynn to someone on the next episode of General Hospital. John questions a person at the PCPD about their reasons for going to jail. Finn informs Chase that their father is no longer able to support himself. How exactly do you propose to do that? Martin asks Nina. Michael goes to see Sonny, hoping his father will pardon him. Get the hell out of my way, shouts Anna. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.